Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're doing a little bit of a bonus video today. Not usually doing three on a Friday, but I had somebody from the community ask me to check out one of their songs and I immediately wanted to do it when I realized that they uploaded it with sheet music. We're going to be looking at the song Rainy Dream, Rainy Dream Fairy Dust by Shikar Nayak. Let's dive into this, see what they're bringing to the table today. Interesting use of dissonance already. I like the short retardando into the return to tempo. Okay, that is a great key change right there too. Nice use of that tension, the accidentals are nice. <laughs> the bass tone coming in there to start this new section. Wonderful way of utilizing that uh, key change. Yeah, short and sweet. Only a minute, 30 seconds. Um, I don't really have a lot to say here, but I do have some things I want to bring up. First of all is I love the chord theory going on here, not just the progression of the chords in each section, but also the key shifts that we have as well. I think both times that we shifted keys were... Uh, they were at great points, and not only just that, but moving to the next key always felt really natural. Uh, the first one introduces a little bit of tension, and pulling out of that to the original key had this bit of relief that immediately was felt in that initial uh, bass tone play with the left hand on the piano. Beautiful stuff. I loved both of those moments. I thought that was awesome. Um, I also like the way that your creating melody and harmony simultaneously while there are melodic or sorry while there are chords being played in some of these places a lot of it is just the four note rise do 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 always moving between these four notes it is a blessing and a curse i think first is you are doing the chordal outlines rising up well you're not really coming back down but it's the constant rise you outline the chord going up and it creates this melodic movement as we have the flow as well there's also some parts where we can view the isolated movement against uh so like right here i said right here as if this was already pulled up <laughs> um Looking at the bottom rows, you can see how the left hand stuff, which is the bottom staff, has uh, quarter notes. Those can create a bit of a melodic flow. There's also another point where that was pushed towards, yep, yeah, right here, where our right hand is taking care of these isolated notes. And we can hear a melodic flow from that with movement coming in as our foundation. So we do have melodic and harmonic ideas simultaneously being crafted by this single line. I think that works really well, and I love it. And so the fluidity of the song from the beginning to the end, utilizing this bass idea as a motif that gets explored with variation and allowing it to give us the chord progression, utilizing the key changes to emphasize different uh, emotional atmospheres, um, and having this simple melody exist outside of the movement. I think all of that works really well. There's also the dynamic qualities of this track that I enjoyed also. 
we do have the push the push and pull in fact right near the beginning of the track it was yeah rather quick on <laughs> bar four and five we have the retardando which slows the track down into the a tempo which is a return to the original speed i thought that was well utilized we have a couple of accelerandos well actually we have one accelerando through the track uh, then we have a couple more retardandos. We have the fermata at the end. The use of space and time contrasting, moving in, accelerating, slowing down. All of those sections are really well done. I also like the volume dynamics we see throughout here, uh, especially towards the end. Uh, yeah, the final section. Uh, no, it wasn't the final section. Was it? it was the slowdown before that. Yep, right here with the bar 19 getting quieter doing a decrescendo off of that initial note into the pianissimo and the mezzo pianist mezzo piano no piano into mezzo piano um, and then of course as we can see in bar 22 we have the accelerando and just under that we see crescendo so we rise in um volume while also increasing speed so there's a lot of really cool dynamic elements in here uh, that allow the song to have this push and pull even right there moving from bar 20 to 21 we have a new tempo of 59 which isn't that different from the 65 that we had previously but as i've mentioned even in pop tracks where the verse to chorus might increase the tempo by just three to five to give it a little bit more electricity 5 bpm can actually do a lot it's one of those elements where it isn't really noticeable but will have an impact on the feeling of the song. And so pulling off, what is that, just 6 BPMs, doesn't feel like a really big idea. And honestly, aside from the fermata before it, you might not even notice that we've been slower without having the sheet music. But it does make the next section feel like it has more weight and impact to it, even if it doesn't feel distinctly slower. It's a really smart idea when composing music um, and probably gets utilized a lot more often than most people are aware. So from a dynamic perspective, I really enjoyed this. And when we mix the dynamics with the linear writing and the use of harmony and melody, it's a really beautiful track. It is. I don't think there's any part of this that I think didn't work as well. There's a couple of neat accidentals that create tension throughout, giving us uh, a little bit of extra spice. I don't think any of them stood out as something that sounded bad, but always sounded... Um, a way to introduce a little bit of extra harmonic variety to the song. Expert use of all of that. <clears throat> My only criticism comes from a place of... Well, I guess it depends on what this is supposed to be. Is this background music for a film or a video game or even an art installation, I could see it working very well because a lot of it feels like background music. While we do have melodic qualities to the playing, particularly with those isolated quarter notes, there really isn't a strong element of melody in here. It feels like background music to me. It feels like soundtrack music. That's not a bad thing in, in and of itself, but I am presented it, this song, in isolation, not part of a larger multimedia work. And I don't think it quite stands on its own from that perspective, at least for me. I think that this is a solid foundation to be built on if it is supposed to be explored by itself. And that is a subjective take. Some people might listen to this and absolutely love the isolated feeling of it. Just creating this atmosphere and dwelling within it. I would love to hear an instrument with this. This sounds to me like a piano accompaniment, and I would love to have a lead instrument melody playing alongside it. I think that would be beautiful. I could also see this being expanded into something much larger, maybe not necessarily orchestral size, but quartet, quintet? even just being expanded outside of the minute and a half idea. Uh, and I think a lot of that just comes down to the repetition of it, which makes it feel very foundational to me and ripe for expansion. So, like I said, it really depends on what this is. At, in one hand, I could definitely see this being a, a demo, something that you have crafted in a moment. It is, uh, you know, one session of sitting and writing. 
and maybe you got this out and you just wrapped it up and you're like, okay, that's the end of a song, but I could see that being expanded outside of this draft. But on the other hand, I think it does work exceptionally well as soundtrack or background music. It does what it needs to do in those cases, which is craft an atmosphere, hone in, in an emotion, but primarily stay out of the way of the audience's attention because that attention should be put on something else whether it is actors or moments in a film or a book they're reading or an art installation that they're supposed to be looking at or even a dance and so i don't necessarily want to say that this feels incomplete it really depends on what shikar wanted to do with it what their intentions are but from a mu purely musical standpoint, with the music at its heart and my subjective tastes coming in, I think this is a exceptionally solid foundation for something to be built from. And I do say exceptionally solid because there is a lot of really good things going on in here. And I suppose I should even bring the length into uh, the conversation as well at just 94 seconds despite its repetition and, and overutilization of its rhythmic motif it never overstays its welcome i can't say at any moment throughout here i ever felt bored or ready for the next idea to come through it just always felt like there was space for something else at least in my uh in my opinion of it but again that something else doesn't have to be musical we don't need another melody or counterpoint or anything like that it could be multimedia other just a, a little scene to go along with it regardless it is fantastic and uh makes me want to dig into more of their works and see what else they're capable of because this is really solid and understands a lot of foundations of composition so yeah i mean i haven't heard the rest of your work shikar if you're watching this but absolutely keep up with the, the music creation. This is phenomenal. Those are my thoughts on Shikar Nayak's Rainy Dream Fairy Dust. Let me know what your thoughts of this were. Did you enjoy it? Did anything stand out to you? What are your opinions or perspectives about this? Did it take you on a little journey? Let me know all that stuff down in the comment section. In the description box, usually I would put links for my stuff, but instead I'm going to link Shikar Nayak's uh, channel and anything else I can find of their streaming platforms or social medias or anything. That way, if you're interested in listening to more of their work, you can easily get there. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three. Also, if you could go to their page, like, subscribe, ring their bell, uh, thumbs up, likes, hearts, whatever it is, that whatever page you land on, however you can show a little bit of support. Uh, if you don't mind doing so, please do so. Show them some love from the Critical Reaction community. All right, until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos.